What is Project Necromancer? We've heard this a bunch of different times in Star Wars, and in The Bad Batch, it's something extremely prevalent. Project Necromancer is Palpatine's contingency plan if he dies. It's essentially how he's going to stay immortal. A necromancer is someone who revives the dead, and that's exactly what Palpatine aims to do, but he plans to revive himself. It was originally a secretive initiative within Star Wars for Palpatine to achieve immortality. It involved intricate cloning experiments, leveraging advanced technology, and the dark side of the Force to produce viable bodies for his spirit to inhabit. Now, if he were still alive, he would have probably been able to just transfer his mind and his consciousness into this new vessel. This was all done through cloning. Now, something really important for this project is, of course, what we heard in the Bad Batch, which is the M count. This refers to the midichlorian count in an individual's cells. The more midichlorians you have, the more potential you have to be a powerful force user. Now, taking it back to the prequel trilogy, midichlorians are microscopic life forms that indicate an individual's potential connection to the force. And I say potential because, well, if Anakin, for example, who had the most midichlorians of any Jedi, over 20,000, never trained in the force, then he never would have realized his potential. A high M count suggests a strong capability to use the force. Project Necromancer sought individuals or clones with high M counts as potential vessels for Palpatine's essence, aiming to create a body powerful enough in the Force to sustain his spirit. Now, in order to do this, the body had to be able to take his M count, his midichlorian count. And since most clones and most beings couldn't handle his level of midichlorians, or any for that matter, it was extremely rare that he would find a viable host until Omega in the last episode. Now, of course, this whole thing is driven by his dark ambition for eternal rule, and it's really a perversion of what Darth Plagueis originally thought of immortality. He thought that essence transfer was merely just not really immortality. I'm going to read you a quick quote from the Darth Plagueis novel, and this is about Palpatine's point of view of essence transfer, at least part of it. Darth Bane had referred to sorcery as one of the purest expressions of the dark side of the Force, and yet he hadn't been able to harness those energies with near the skill as had his one-time apprentice, Xena. Bane's disciples, however, believed that he had experimented with a technique of even greater significance, that of essence transfer, which he had learned after acquiring and plundering the holocron of Darth and Didu and which involved the relocation of an individual's consciousness into another body or, in some cases, a talisman, temple, or sarcophagus. Thus had the most powerful of the ancient Sith Lords survived death to haunt and harass those who would infiltrate their tombs. But none of this amounted to corporeal survival. Plagueis had no interest in being a lingering, disembodied presence, trapped between worlds and powerless to affect the material realm except through the actions of weak-minded beings he could goad, coax, or will into action. Nor did he seek to shunt his mind into the body of another, whether an apprentice, as Bane was thought to have attempted, or some vat-grown clone. Nothing less than the immortality of his body and mind would suffice. Everlasting life. Right here, it shows that Plagueis actually thought that a cloned body or essence transfer in general was literally just some sort of a joke and it was not true everlasting life. It was not true immortality. Nothing less than the immortality of his body and mind would suffice. So putting yourself into another body is just kind of like a perversion of what he really thought was immortality. And so we could see that Palpatine didn't actually figure immortality out he just kind of used science to do it in some sort of weird way. So Project Necromancer was done by cloning. And not just any cloning, mind you. The aim is to create clones that can be used by Palpatine to transfer his consciousness into them after his original body dies or when it gets really old. Now the problem is you can't clone for sensitives. It's extremely difficult. So they have to do blood tests for all the clones, for all the beings, and then drop some midichlorians in them, I'm guessing Palpatine's blood, to see if there's a match, if there's a bond, or if it's rejected. Then this would basically make him immortal because he could just transfer his essence into one body after the other without any consequence. And this is literally what happened in the comic run Dark Empire by Dark Horse. Luke turned to the dark side, became Palpatine's apprentice. Palpatine had a ton of different clones of his younger self and every time Luke killed him, he would just jump into the next clone through essence transfer. Even trying to jump into Leia and Han's baby 
basically having backup bodies ready for his mind to jump into, ensuring that he never truly dies as long as a clone is available. So this project really intertwines the worlds of science, cloning, and the dark side together, and all has to be focused on individuals with a high M count, or individuals that could take his M count, making them more suitable for Palpatine's purpose, of course. It's very difficult to do this, and that's why Plagueis himself thought that it's just not real immortality. Real immortality is staying in your own body and your own mind, not jumping from one to the next. Now, Snoke, for example, I don't really think that that was the main plan for Palpatine. I think that was some sort of a plan B or C or like some intermediary result of the cloning experiments by splicing genes and just making abominations. Maybe, you know, even somewhat paving the way for Palpatine's return while another clone was being constructed or the perfect clone was being readied. This connection highlights the extensive preparation and experiments by Palpatine and his Sith cultists to cheat death. So while I don't think Snoke was the end-all be-all best thing that Palpatine had going for him, it was definitely a step towards achieving eternal life, or at least in Palpatine's mind. And this is where Grogu comes in. I think the involvement of Grogu's genetics, potentially to enhance the force sensitivity of any clones that they might be making, really kind of shows just what Palpatine had in mind, that he wanted to take an already greatly powerful force-sensitive being who had the potential like Yoda did, in order for Palpatine to be put in there and to grow. Grow his force abilities, I mean. And with Grogu's unique force abilities and his high M count, it could provide the perfect host for Palpatine, or even for generating new force-sensitive clones under Sith influence. Now, what I really want to happen, I want to see Palpatine clone himself properly, and for him to have a younger Palpatine to basically put his consciousness into. I think we've seen a lot of different things with Star Wars, especially with the sequel trilogy. I would personally like to see a young, full-powered Palpatine make a comeback and to show us what he's really all about, kind of like Dark Empire. You know, Palpatine's mature and powerful mind, but in his young, strong body. So that's what Project Necromancer is. It's Palpatine's hopes to find a vessel and create a vessel through science that would be able to house his consciousness while still maintaining the same or higher level of midichlorians that he once had in his original body. Let me know what you think about Project Necromancer. Who do you think would be the best host for Palpatine in Star Wars in general? Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you always.